Welcome to AMI West 2019. It's great to see all of you guys here. I would like to invite you all to come up and sit in the seats so we can hear Trevor a little bit better uh, and get a good camera angle uh, on everything. Yep. So um, we're celebrating 21 years of AMI West this year, uh, presenting a show every year. And it's our 22nd show because the first show was show number one. Um, so we've had our attendance go up and down and in and out uh, during that whole time of that run. And we want to thank our sponsors, in particular our gold sponsor, Trevor Dickinson from uh, Aeon uh, Corporation. Or limited, that's right, it's limited, isn't it? Very limited. Very limited, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and his additional funding has enabled us to uh, get some, some permanent hardware uh, this year that we didn't own. We now have a... Uh, high resolution projector, not this one. This is a this is a definitely way beyond the box projector that is on loan from Alex Perez. Thank you, Alex, wherever you are back there. And um, so our our projector is something that we'll have throughout the year. Also, was able to buy a new screen uh, and uh, funding uh, a few little ins and outs that we didn't have a budget for, and now we do. Thank you, Trevor. We really appreciate it very much. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Amiga on the Lake is also sponsoring this year, even though they were unable to attend due to being uh, overwhelmed with success, uh, which is something that we all like to hear about. Uh, they got, I think, over 300 orders for their brand new keyboard. And uh, so the ones who ordered it assembled, they are madly assembling them every day. <laughs> Takes about an hour and a half just to put it together, and then they get to test it. You know how that goes. Uh, so... They're putting them together one by one. Uh, Jeff Yoder and Aaron Smith are working overtime to take care of their uh, success. And I'd like for uh, everybody who's in the room from Sacramento Amiga Computer Club to wave your hand. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So these are the people who support the show. There are volunteers who do whatever we ask. Uh, and we don't get ever get any refusals. They just say, what do you need? which is really great. Uh, there's about 14 of us this year who are from the club who are volunteering and running the show, and Bill's doing the broadcast as always, and Robert's doing the video. Uh, we have a complete list of that online at uh, mus.net slash volunteers. If you want to look, I encourage you to do that. So uh, there's really a lot of detail that goes into the show. I don't, I'm not going to go into the watch factory. I'd be here for an hour, uh, which you don't want to listen to. Uh, so... You know, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker and our gold sponsor, Trevor Dickinson. Oh my goodness, Amy West, what do you do to me? <laughs> I have to go home and the rest of the year I don't drink. Now you won't believe that, Is but that it's, <laughs> it's, it's almost true. In fact, I went for six weeks without a drink last year to lose weight and I lost about What's that in pounds? 25 pounds? So, anyway, what's my name? Where do I live? Okay, right. <laughs> we had a great night last night. Amy West, I love Amy West. I was in uh, Gamescom uh, a few months back, and there were nearly 400,000 people. And I was in the, uh, the retro computer area on Amiga Futures stand, and uh, it was brilliant. And I don't know if Daniel's here. No, Daniel's not here. Daniel and I were presenting all, all of the uh, Amiga OS 4 machines, the Aeon machines, and uh, it, was, it was a really good show. Daniel had all his games running, uh, Diablo uh, uh, and um, Wings on an 8.12.22. Um, he had uh, also t uh, Tower 57. It was a really, really great experience. And we what was really impressed me was all the young, younger people and youngsters and kids that came up and played on the, the A1222 and the X5000. It was brilliant. All right, there was a whole selection of classic machines there as well from, uh, from Amiga Futures. And then we get Noise, Amiga 34, which is, uh, it feels like yesterday, it probably was yesterday, because I traveled back from Noise. I had to get back to New Zealand for work. Uh, and that was really good. And then we had about 800 people, 750, 800 people over two days. First day was, well, they were both busy days. Uh, 800, peop 800 individuals. Uh, both days was about 600 people. It was mobbed. And, and we, we got a lot of interest in Amiga OS 4. 
uh, as well as m lots of amazing classic developments. I mean, our community is just crazy. All right, I know, we're all crazy, right? But our community is, is so brilliant. I'm so, um, I'm so, uh, it sounds a bit corny, I'm so proud to be a member of our community uh, because we just do things, we just love it. Anyway, that's enough of that rubbish. Um, Aon, we're the gold sponsor this year. Uh, I've done it a couple of times before. But uh, when uh, Brian says, well, we could use the extra funds because we're short of this, that, and the other, I thought we could do it this year, so that's what we did. Um, so what, what, what's Aon producing different this year? What, what's, what's coming out? Um, I look back at previous um, <laughs> Ami West presentations, and I'm sure we talked about version 2 coming up a year ago. <laughs> Actually, what happened was we brought out version 1.5 of Enhancer, uh, as a free update. That was the fifth free update in less than two and a half years. Uh, so the, 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 the Enhancer team are working really, really hard and well to keep updates coming. But I am pleased to reveal now there is version two of Enhancer is coming out and it'll be before Christmas. So I'm told if it doesn't come out, blame Matthew Lehman. <laughs> Matthew, I'm blaming you now, right? Now, Matthew couldn't be here this year. I think he's sponsoring the show. Uh, he couldn't be here. He is sponsoring the show. So Matthew of Amiga Kit is sponsoring the show as well. He couldn't be here because he said there's two reasons. One is a personal reason. It's because he's called Matthew. That's the reason, but never mind. But the other reason is um, that's humor. I realized last night that my humor is not the same as some American humor. <laughs> and I had to explain a joke several times. <laughs> and Paul said... I still don't get it, right? <laughs> and and I thank you, thank you. And uh, Tony Wyatt, Tony Wyatt, a fantastic developer. There's Tony. Tony got it straight away. He said, "That's funny." Well, it's a bit crude, but it's still funny. Uh, but Paul, Paul didn't get it. Who else didn't get it? There's a few people didn't get my. There you are. Mark didn't get it, even now. And I can't repeat it because there are ladies in the room. <laughs> <laughs> And as Paul said, if they would just learn to speak English. Now, it's called English, right? It's not called... Ah, oh, stop, 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 stop. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm pleased to announce that there's a, there's a new version of... Uh, uh, an updated version of uh, uh, Enhancer software, software coming out. It will be uh, uh, a paid update. But obviously, if you own the earlier versions, you'll get a discount. Uh, I wasn't supplied... The prices by Matthew, so I tried to get out of him, you know, sometimes when you talk to Matthew, you get information, and I tend to call him Matthew Black Hole Lehman, because nothing escapes. Everything goes in, nothing comes out. <laughs> I've told, uh, he, he knows I call him that, so it's not really a problem, I think. Anyway, uh, so, um, but that will have a number of interesting uh, components. There's a few I know about, I'm not supposed to tell you, but I really do want to tell you, so if you ask me later, I will tell you over a small drink, <laughs> if you buy, right. <laughs> uh, well, or a large drink, that's okay as well. Uh, I will even try to tell a joke. <laughs> yeah, the, there is an enhancer software core you may have uh, heard of over a year ago. Again, this will be a free uh, release of uh, the core elements of enhancer. Um, it was supposed to come out a long time ago, but I'm reliably told it's going to come out now, and it actually did because Stephen Soley in the uh, Ami West, Stephen's over there, and the Ami West DevCom presented the Enhancer uh, core, and he also gave out uh, free copies to all the developers who attended. Whether they wanted them or not, whether they, yeah, <laughs> whether they wanted them or not, he gave them out. Is that true? Okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the things I realized, um, you know, we, lots of information circulates about what we're doing, what other companies are doing, but I, I hadn't realized just how, I had a, we had a DevCom in, uh, in Cardiff with a group of developers, uh, uh, Alex Prez turned up, um, anyone else from here, was that, that no, just Alex, uh, and I realized that even our developers don't know what we're doing, which was a real surprise to me, so I did a little presentation to them, it was a 10 or 12 slide presentation about Amiga OS 4 graphics, where we are, what's happening with it. And I was surprised 
the lack of knowledge with our developers. So actually, I was surprised I didn't know either. So I, that's why I did the presentation. Um, <laughs> Aon writes, uh, has written for it, it pays for it, 2D drivers for Radeon HD cards, Radeon RX cards, and the latest Polaris cards. It's an ongoing work. It's very expensive. It's very time consuming. And the developer who does it is a genius. In fact, all of our developers are geniuses, to be honest, because without them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, but it, it's a long process. It's continuing to update uh, the Amiga 1 hardware, uh, the Amiga OS 4, so it supports all the latest graphics cards. Now, I've seen written on the forums that oh, Aeon's, Aeon's machines don't su support many graphics cards. I want to say, sorry, I didn't say it. I didn't say what I wanted to say. It supports literally dozens and dozens and dozens of graphics cards. Thank you. A lot. <laughs> right? And if, if you've ever tested them, and I know some of us have, Michael Stavosito is here, he tests, he has, a, I don't know, he has probably about four or five Polaris cards. Uh, it supports a lot of cards, right? Um, Warp 3D SAI and Warp 3D Nova, uh, uh, obviously done by Hans de Reuter, paid by us. Without Hans's work, we will be in the dark ages. And that's no, that's no, except, no, it's no uh, understatement. Uh, OpenGL ES2, we pay Daniel Musner. Is Daniel here? No, he's not here at the moment. And, and, and all the OpenGL GL ES2 work is due to Daniel and his, his, his skills. We have really um, energetic, <laughs> uh, active, uh, who just churn through work. We have people that do that, who are developers, who are not paid, they do it voluntarily. People like Casey, I th always thought that was Cas1E, but it's Casey, someone told me. So uh, that's Roman Cargan, he does GLAS4. Who know PowerPC in France does EGL RAP. So what does it all mean? They allow a lot of games uh, uh, to be ported to the Amiga. You know, games that are on other systems, open source games, games that have been open source. Uh, and it gives us a lot more, uh, gives, if you're a game player, I'm not particularly a game player, but a lot of people like to play games and like to play games on the Amiga. So what does it really mean? EGL RAP requires OpenGLES GLES2, as does GLES4, GL4ES. And OpenGLES2 requires Warp 3D Nova. So without that building block, we wouldn't be doing anything that's happening at the moment. Right, uh, uh, you probably well, some of you might know that uh, at uh, Amiga 34, I announced the, the upcoming release of, the, finally, of the Amiga 1 A1222, known as Table. Yeah. Uh, and people ask me, why haven't you released it? Um, the hardware was ready about four years ago. And uh, for various reasons, uh, it, you know, it, it's just not come to fruition. Uh, we have about 50 beta test machines out there. Um, there's a new determined effort by Hyperion to complete the ISO. And thanks to the work of Tony Wyatt, who's here, over there, uh, we have our first uh, ISO update for quite some time. And I expect to see a number of ISOs now coming out regularly as we go towards production of the machine. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm really pleased that uh, Tony's doing the work. Thank you, Tony. It, 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 without people like Tony Wyatt, who give their time uh, and experience and effort free, they do it because they want to, they do it because they're Amigans, they don't care who, who owns what, they don't care about IP, they don't care about trademarks, they just care about keeping this operating system updated and, and working on it. And you know, uh, we need more people like Tony. Yeah. So at... Uh, at uh, Gamescom, they are pictures from Gamescom. I was amazed to see all, you know, a lot of young kids, both male and female, coming playing with the machines. There was a queue of, of these are both A1222s. In, if anyone knows Daniel, he's the guy who's about seven feet tall. He's got bright fluorescent top, which he bought here last year. <laughs> he likes very bright colors, as you can see. <laughs> Lime green, oops, do not stare into the beam, sorry. Thank you. 
Yeah, 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 sure. So yeah, uh, uh, Daniel had his, his uh, X5000 and his uh, A1222 at Gamescom, and it was great seeing this, the, the queue of people, especially on the X5000. He was playing. A, he had eight people playing um, Atomic Bomberman, a, a game he ported from from the PC, and they were lined up all the time, wanting to play it, all ages, mainly young. Naturally, I didn't play it because I wasn't very good. So. What is, the a what is this new A1222 we're going to bring out? I'm calling it the Early Adopter Edition. I didn't want to call it Early Bird because that has connotations. I couldn't call it First Contact. I used that before. I thought, what word can I do? Ah, Amigans are Early Adopters. So it's an Early Adopter uh, Edition. It will be uh, released at the price of around $450. Um, it will include the updated table motherboard, what does that mean? Why is there an updated table mother motherboard? Does it mean the other one doesn't work? No, because it was released so long ago, a few components of the board are being replaced because they're obsolete, minor components, but nevertheless they've got to be replaced. Uh, and so when we respin the board, we want to make sure that everything works <laughs> with, with these minor component changes. So we'll build five boards, make sure they work. I'm sure they will, but we'll make sure they work. Then we will produce the full early adopter run, and at the low price, and it is a low price of 450, because uh, any updates for, for uh, um, the Mega OS or drivers, they all come out uh, when they're available. If they're not available in the time when the when the board ships, so for. What's, what's more expensive than U.S. dollars? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Newbies plus Canadian price will make what? 750, is that right? Yeah, that's about the exchange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will come with an OS4 license supplied by Hyperion. Uh, and Hyperion are really focused on producing this thing, which is really good. Uh, it will be fully compatible with the Hearts of Two software, that, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, you will have access, wherever it orders, pre orders, will have access to the regular file and driver updates. That's the intention. So we will produce, I haven't decided yet, even now, whether it's a, this pre order be on the list. Well, I've got uh, 80 Polish <laughs> Amigans who want to order now. <laughs> They've been badgering me for a few months. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, it will be a limited run, probably 100, just for the early adopter. After that will be full manufacturing, and that price will be higher because if we want to keep making them, we actually got to make a little money as well. Um, so Tony, Hyatt, Tony Wyatt has been appointed by Hyperion Entertainment to create updated ISOs for the, for, for the table. Actually, Entertainment's going to be doing it for all of the um, Amiga One systems. Um, and that includes the X5000, which still says pre-release. Um, and the X5040, uh, which is uh, actually, once Tony does the ISO for that, we can start selling it, to be honest, because it's ready. So uh, you expect to see n news about the X5040 in the near future. Uh, Stephen Soli is supervising the Exec SG updates, and you'll learn more about that today. And I'll, I'll, I'll make a statement on Exec SG, because I've seen so many crazy things on the forums uh, about Exec, exec SG. So, uh, Later on in this presentation, I'll do that. Now, where's Bill when you need him? Bill, where are you? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Bill gives me apple juice uh, all day long. <laughs> uh, so parts have been ordered for the early adopter system, and uh, I just can't wait for it to get out because it needs to get out there. I'm pleased to... Next year is the 35th anniversary of uh, the Amiga. And anyone that was at the Computer History Museum in 2015, I mean, we owe a debt of gratitude to Bill and his team because Bill almost died over that. <laughs> but and it, he almost bit off too much. But he delivered. It was the best show I've been to in the world ever, anything I've been to. It was so emotional, it was brilliant. And at that show, you remember Viva Amiga was first shown uh, at the uh, after dinner, uh, at the banquet night. And it was shown to a group of about, I don't know, 450, 500 people, maybe. 
and of those, about a third were uh, actually High Toro or ex-Commodore people. And I was at a table with Adam Spring. Adam's here today. And uh, we were at a table with about uh, 10 or 11 High Toro people. And they were in tears watching that film. And it was very emotional for me watching it, because watching them being emotional. Well, I'm pleased to, s I'm pleased to announce that um, Zach Weddington is creating a remix of that, uh, that movie for Amiga 35, whatever ami happens in Amiga 35. Uh, I'm funding it, and it's going to be a two-hour movie. There will be a remix, more, more interviews, more information of, you know, from that original movie. So I always thought Viva Amiga was too short, uh, an hour, so you're going to see a two-hour version coming out. And the good news is I'll have the distribution rights, which is even better. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a joke. And you laughed. So you do have a sense of humor. <laughs> Uh, I'm also pleased to announce the Amiga One X5000 Plus edition. Now, Matthew didn't want me to put some of this information in, so I'm sorry, Matthew. It's too late. You can't reply to me half an hour before I start my presentation and say, please change that. So I didn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a major revision of the Amiga One X5000. You're going to see a new audio driver with a modern PCIe sound card. Modern and available and powerful, and it works really well. No clicks or pops or problems. You know, this slot, that slot, it works. Right? You're going to see a new, uh, you're going to see the Polaris graphics card and driver. So it'll, be, it'll support the latest card. You're also going to see a new Wi-Fi card and driver. Yeah. Um, work commissioned by Aon to create a new Wi-Fi driver that really works and works on the X X5000, I suppose other machines as well. Uh, it's going to be supplied with Enhancer 2 software. There's so many numerous customer upgrade options, I can't even mention them, and there's, there's some really nice stuff I have mentioned. I promised I would. I took it out. I took that out. Actually, I took it out yesterday before he didn't reply because <laughs> I knew he wouldn't want to. Right, a statement about ex ExecSG. Right. ExecSG was developed and was owned by the Freedom Brothers, Thomas and Hans Jörg Frieden. And they licensed it to Hyperion Entertainment under a non exclusive uh, 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 object code only license, non exclusive, which surprised me, to be honest, but that's what it is. Uh, I purchased that the whole of Acres XSG, all the IP, uh, quite some time ago, to be honest, and uh, uh, renegotiate that license with Hyperion. So Hyperion still have a non-exclusive object code license, and they have an option to per buy it back from me in the future should they wish to do so. Right. Um, Steve Soley has been appointed, volunteered, um, put his hand up, yeah, I know, I know. I, I was being nice. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Noted, Stephen? Uh, uh <laughs> Stephen uh, is the Exec SG team lead. He's, he's, put in, he's building a support team to drive the future development of Exec SG, and that means uh, really improving the performance of Exec SG and everything around it. Uh, but it, why is it there? It's there for OS4. I mean, it's... Exec SG without the Amiga OS 4 is just Exec SG. It needs Amiga OS 4. So working very closely with Hyperion developers, uh, putting a team together of developers, he's got five or six. He, he'll talk about it later. I don't want to steal his thunder. But I, I just want to say that I'm really, really pleased that, that Steve is taking this challenge. And it is a challenge <coughs> of putting a team together for Exec SG and driving that forward. We need to drive Amiga OS 4 forward. And Exec SG is not owned or controlled by Aon Technology. It's owned by me. I might be part of Aon Technology, but it's not owned by Aon Technology. It has nothing to do with Aon Technology. It is Trevor Dickinson. Now, is that clear? <laughs> right, thank you. <laughs> uh, last night, oh, I must have drunk too much last night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, it was a big, uh, hopefully you can photograph that, and I got in front of the thing again, sorry. 
sorry. Um, there's um, M68K support on the GCC compiler is really under threat. There's a new GCC compiler coming out, and the M68K support is going to be dropped. So um, we have a, actually one of our, he's not really a beta tester, but he, he, he's the guy that supports Debian Linux, for the, S S the SP version of Debian Linux. And he has a couple of table boards which have been running, well, they were running 24-7, uh, just building Linux, right, Debian. Uh, he contacted me and said, look, we're going to lose M68 support in a GCC compiler. So it means in the future, we will not be able to compile anything for 6800, 6, 6000 software. Done, finished. And I thought, oh, that's bad. And then uh, uh, he said, Alex Perez has already donated uh, generously to the, to the uh, fundraising. We need to raise so much money to pay a developer to do the work. Uh, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll promote that on Aeon's web pages and I'll put it in my blog. That was two days before I left to come to Ami West. And of course, you come to Ami West and uh, you forget who your name is, right? Uh, I don't know why. I think I blame Paul. He snores. Actually, I think we both snore, but that's all right. Um, anyway, uh, last night, Alex reminded me that uh, we need to raise this money. So I stupidly says, look, I'm sure we can raise. How much is left? And I think there was, a, I won't say how much, because I still want you to d donate, right? And he said, uh, if we can raise that money, we, they, they can pay a developer to make sure that M68K stays in the compiler and we can support it going forward, which is really important for any classic Amiga stuff, any future development of, of, of Amiga code, classic Amiga code. So I said, okay, well, look, if, some, if, if people can put the money down now, I started with $10, it went up to 20 or 30, uh, then we can cover it. I'm sure we, as a group, can cover the cost and I'll cover any shortfall. Some idiot put $20 down, so that was it, I was stuck. So, but I'm, I'm pleased to rate, I'm pleased to announce that just the donations from last night, I think we got about $450. So we're, we are going to make up, Ami West donated $450. We're going to I'm going to make sure we donate the balance so there's enough money so we can get that developer working on the M M68K uh, compiler. So everyone who... <laughs> so, so everyone who donated last night Thank you very much. It was really, you bastards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a very bad word. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you for donating. You know, it, it, it's great that you know it, a small community like ours can still, you know, put a hand to the pocket and, and find the, the means. Uh, and thanks to Alex for for bringing it up last night. Thank you, Alex. Um, we, we, we I've emailed uh, Adrian um, and said that. Uh, uh, we have Ami West. Ami West has raised the money, and we'll make sure you get to your minimum amount to pay the developer. So I, uh, I e emailed him this morning. So that's really good news. Thank you very much. So after that very short and strange presentation, any questions? And don't leave me standing here, please. <laughs> Ask me a question. What was your first Amiga? Ah! <laughs> 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 Computer, I mean. <laughs> Trevor, repeat the question. And what was my first Amiga? Well, actually, to be honest, my first Amiga wasn't an Amiga. That's a stupid answer. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a Commodore PET. It was a Commodore PET. Yeah, then a Commodore 64. Then a Commodore 128. And if you know me, you'll know I lived in Texas for a while. Hence my accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a joke when you laugh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand this. <laughs> right, anyway. Uh, so, uh, when, I, when, I was in, <laughs> when I was in Texas uh, uh, during a very violent thunderstorm, uh, my 128 blew up. The house got struck by lightning. It came in through the little phone line, damaged the uh, machine. Uh, and it was right off. So, with the insurance check, I thought, what is this Omega? computer. <laughs> I forgot about this Omega. I say that because every time I come to the States, I say, look, I'm coming to, I'm going to retro computer commerce. Yeah. Where? Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. What is it? It's the Omega computer. What's an Omega? <laughs> so, 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 yes, so with the insurance check, I bought an Omega 2000. Ooh. There you go. With a bridge board, sorry. 
And it was, and I, saw, I, I found out very quickly that the, the, the PCs were rubbish. I mean, the bridge, that, the bridge board was the equivalent of a PC of the day. It's utterly useless. Oh, I could run Lotus 1, 2, 3. Still useless. Right. So my first amigo was the Amiga 2000. Ugly, really ugly. Inside. But, oh, yeah. But oh, so expandable. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Kevin. Um, production timetables, delivery timetables, if you guys have them for the table. You always ask the most difficult I questions. I always ask you the most difficult Repeat the question. Um, what, is the, what is the anticipated? Can I put lots of weasel words in? What's the anticipated delivery time for the uh, uh, A1222? The Amiga 1 A1222. Um, it is an Amiga 1, in case anyone wants to keep it, not an Amiga 1. Matthew, it's an Amiga 1. Uh, uh, the, A2, uh, the, the five boards will be built actually in the UK by the, U, by the main uh, manufacturer <coughs> company. Uh, once they're approved, well, all the parts for all the boards, right? But five will be manufactured in the UK, to make sure all's okay. And then after that, they'll go to their subsidiary in Eastern Europe, because it's less expensive. Uh, we're looking at uh, the timing is six, 12 to 16 weeks for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the first manufacturing. And then with a slight delay between the five boards and the balance. So, unfortunately, not before Christmas, but. Um, but can we order before Christmas? Well, that's why I want to. One thing I have to agree with Matthew on this uh, sometime. In the Amiga world, we've had so many disappointments with people not delivering and taking money and promising things. Uh, he never wants to take pre orders in terms of cash. But, but we might. I, I'm trying to convince him that we should. Because, one, it makes us do it, it makes us. If we have a, an imperative and a demand, and a, 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 we are honestly forced to do it, it makes you do things. Sometimes you have to set you know, goals, and actually you have to achieve that, you have to strive for those goals. If you don't, you just sit on your, on your hands all the time. So I think that we should, we should actually take a deposit, a small deposit, and actually take pre-orders. However, if you do a pre-order list, I have already got an uh, indication from the Polish guys We've been chasing up for the last year or so. They've got about 80 people on their list. When it comes down to it, maybe it'll be 40, but it doesn't matter. We have a, we have a demand for it. So that, that's my intention. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Good. Hey, yeah. Trevor. So, you know, we had a big event in Germany recently, mm -hmm. and sort of the numbers are cropping up for that one. Do you think we could ever get something like that going in America at all? Well, would be the question. The question was, with the, the attendance we get at the, uh, the German shows uh, in Neuss, the league of 30, 32, 34, why can't we achieve that in the US? And I'd love to see that in the US. When I speak to Bill Bazzari and Brian Denny about this, the, the, the attendance at Ami West in, you know, in the past, you know, you know, know what I know about the show. This, this show is small and perfectly formed. And of course, we stream to the world, which is great. So we have people around the world uh, uh, viewing the presentations, lectures. But actually, you have to come to Ami West to really experience it. It is probably the, one of the friendliest shows you'll ever go to. You, you can have. It's really good to be among like-minded people and talk, talk about uh, Amiga and Amiga's history. You, know, you get people like Ron Nicholson who came yesterday. I'd like to see more of the original developers come to our show and, and actually promote it. Uh, I think Brian and, and Bill are, are working hard to think how do we get bigger attendances at Ami West. But having said that, Amiga 30 uh, in 2015, we had uh, how many people that show? I mean, it was amazing. Computer History Museum. It was brilliant. It was a real community event. Tell me what other computer in the world has actually done that? A, a, a community driven event. I think. The History Museum in the in the state in the country that developed it, a, a computer. It was fantastic. We should be we should be able to do that. We should be able to get more people. But it takes a lot. Without the work of people like Marcus in Germany, uh, Bill Bazzari, there would be no shows because it takes someone to stand up, do the work, and bring the people together. And it, it is a very very difficult and aging process, as Bill will tell you. And you know, if you want to get divorced. 
I tend to get divorced. <laughs> Try running a Amiga show. <laughs> but yeah, so I'd love to see more people. How do we do it? Brian and, and Bill, I think you have ways to do that. Trevor? So um, can you comment more on the new drivers for the 5,000 plus will be available for 5,000 users as well? Oh, of course they will. All you've got to do is buy an answer, the answer two package. Yeah, they'll all be there. And then uh, there's a couple questions on the internet. Um, uh, you know, we'll save the exec SP question for tomorrow. Is, is Hans actively working on bug fixes for the Radeon? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Repeat um, the question. Is Hans de Reuter working on bug fixes for the Radeon and what 3D Nova and this and all that? Yes, he is. In fact, um, what we've done is kind of stop, right, Hans, next two months, all you're doing is working on bug fixes. So, yes. And, and uh, well, I think I never asked that question. I've already told him that. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't lie. <laughs> so, there's another one that just came in around the, the Tabor Mark II. Uh, with the Polaris, will we see overlay supports? Uh, yeah, with Table Mark II, we will see overlay support in Polaris. We won't need it. I'm not saying anymore. Okay. okay, we won't need it. You're in here first. <laughs> yes. The um, Wi Fi and sound card for the Plus, <coughs> those also will be available yeah, separate yeah. to buy as yes, kits. Yes, If you want to. Repeat the question. Yeah. Uh, with the Amiga uh, One X5000 Plus, would the uh, Wi-Fi and sound cards be available for other users? Yes. Yes, you'll be able to find those. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we need to wrap up basically. With the upcoming release of the 8, the 1222 and the 5000 Plus, what are your thoughts or any on, what thoughts on uh, partnerships for cases? Are we going to keep that totally separate? Or is that going to um, be something that's going to be integrated? Uh, with the X5000 Plus, the case has always been Selected and it will be, uh, uh, it'll be a bone, I'll have a bone ball, not deep as usual. Uh, with A1222, um, that's a good question because I've never seen a case I really like. Uh, Steve Jones' <coughs> project, the A1500 um, project, uh, I bought, well, I actually pledged on that one because I wanted a case for my table. I've got it in a black case at the moment. And, uh, I wanted something that's more Amiga like. Um, so, but it's quite, that's quite an expensive case, to be honest. I mean, it's getting to be the price of the, the board itself. Uh, so, it's, it's an interesting question, and I, um, I, I can't answer that at the moment. Yeah. Not because I don't want to. One last question from, oh, Paul, my. Repeat my, the question. A, yes. When will Aeon do a real Amiga laptop? <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, I have to ask it. <laughs> I'm not sorry. He actually was, and he's not sorry. Uh, <laughs> 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 and the answer is, well, Bill, uh, Bill and the, where is he? Ken Lester and Pat Wall and Jan, Jan tried to produce a, a classic laptop, and it's called Alice. And there's still some of there. I'm sure uh, Bill will uh, Sorry, Alex, I'll sell you a, an, an Alice laptop if you want one. I've got my Alice with me. Um, and if you don't know what Alice is, it's either Amiga or A, but an Amiga laptop incorporating a classic experience, Alice. And it runs, obviously it runs uh, under emulation, but it runs OS4, it runs uh, classic Amiga, and it runs, if you want it, Windows and, and Linux. But it runs it as native, you feel like you're in a native system. And if you haven't used it, uh, the rabbit hole feature is really cool because then you can run programs like LibreOffice, um, Firefox, any Linux program, but it runs on the Amiga desktop, the workbench. So that's great. It's not a power PC laptop. But I think with some of the developments in hardware and what I know Steve wants to do with software, I think we'll be seeing other options for ways of giving us our Amiga OS 4 fix. And if you want any more, answer those questions. Ask Steve. Oh, no. Uh, over, <laughs> over, <laughs> over, over a quiet thing. One last question. Yeah. And then we'll throw out. Sure, thank you. Do you have an update on LibreOffice? Oh, right, LibreOffice. Yeah. There's two things on LibreOffice. It's been a hell of a long project. 
It's been a very expensive project, but it was done for a number of reasons. It was done to uh, to um, create an office package for uh, for Windows OS 4. Uh, some beta versions are, com are coming out. We have some people bug, bug tests at the moment. I think Eld is one, um, and others. Um, we need to resolve a small issue with uh, to increase the beta test pool because they need access to a, a one file, um, which is not released to the general public. We need that to go with the package, so I need to resolve that. I only found out that yesterday that's still not been resolved. So uh, I need to resolve that with Tim from the group at Hyperion, and then we'll be able to do a wider beta test pool. But it is being beta tested. Uh, it's quite slow on slow machines at the moment. I hope that will, the speed will improve. Uh, is it usable? Uh, I, I didn't want to demo at this show because it's very buggy, crashes a lot, you know, and it's, but it's there, people have used it, you know, they're, they're, they're testing it, we need more testers now. So, hope that answers the question. Okay, so thank, thank you very you. much. We've been told that if we wander outside the mic box, it will explode. Uh, so uh, that's why we're kind of crowding in here in the corner so that we don't explode. Well, it's a good thing you did. Uh, <laughs> it's a very good thing you did. Uh, we have hard copies of the show schedule right there on the Welcome to Amy West table. Uh, it's also online at amywest.net slash schedule 2019. And our next presentation uh, will be a shorter presentation by Stephen Soley at 12.30. Uh, and then we have it scheduled for another longer presentation tomorrow because we know you'll have questions. Um, one, of the, one of the points behind trying to uh, shorten up our presentations a little bit is to uh, generate some conversation at uh, sponsor and exhibit tables. So please, if you have more questions of Trevor before he escapes, yeah. tie him down and uh, ask him your question. So um, thanks for uh, your time and attention right now. And we'll see you back here at 1230. By the way, we will have um, pizza for lunch here, sponsored by AEM uh, for, uh, on the show floor. So pizza for everybody for free. Uh, and you don't have to watch for lunch. Uh, thank you, Trevor. So we will see you uh, for lunch and around the tables and wherever you want to uh, you know, see stuff. Wanted to mention some of our other exhibitors. Um, Mark, I don't know, what did you guys bring this year besides the uh, exhibit last year? Um, a 1222. Oh, brought a 1222. Yep. Okay, so you can see it at 1222 in action at the Muck table. Yep. Uh, be sure to see Doug Compton's table back there with uh, Ted Mark. Uh, and um, also uh, the SAC table. Everything that you see spread out there is for sale cheap. And I mean, really cheap. Uh, we're trying to. Uh, create storage space in our storage area and reduce it or eliminate it. So please visit the SAC table and buy something. Info accessories, if you're not familiar with Rebel, uh, there is a version there that you can uh, buy for five bucks and take home and uh, look at and use scripting language that you can build applications with. Don't have to learn C. Uh, so uh, that's kind of a sweet deal too. And also, at that table, there will be classic uh, Amiga accessories for sale. We got joysticks, A1000 keyboards, uh, new old stock A1000 mice, uh, and uh, an Amiga 500 and an Amiga 1000 for sale. So that had been uh, cleaned and tested and worked perfect. So uh, visit that table as well, and uh, have a good morning. We'll see you back here at 12:30.